If other people are in the house and I put him in the crate, barks his head off. Um, so yeah. Have you tried putting him in the crate after people have been here? Been here? Like after they leave here? No, so, so why are they here? So uh, uh, something that a lot of dogs can struggle with is when that door goes, you put a dog in the crate. Then the person comes in and the dog can't settle, so it's just bark, bark, bark. Whereas yeah. if you have the dog out when people come in, but then when the dog's calmer like this, then pop the dog in the crate. Have you tried that? Yeah. So I don't, because I know if I put him in prior to yeah. people coming in, it's forget it. He definitely needs to be at the door to say hello. And I've done a few things there where I've had him either come. It, obviously, if I had him come get you, what I would have done is I would have had him behind this door, made him sit and down. Yeah and then wait till he's fairly calm until I let you in or something of that nature. And it, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's just, he's, the one thing I say about him, he's just very unpredictable. Like I'll think, you know, I've got him on a good stead and then all of a sudden he'll just go nuts for no, like nothing will have happened and he'll just go nuts. And he does a lot of this. You have FOMO, don't you, mate? I think that's a lot of his issue. There's a lot of FOMO. FOMO. Fear of missing out. He does have a lot of that. Who needs to be in and see everything. Um, he does have that, yes. Like he needs to be in everyone's... So, that's what I do. He doesn't bark at outside noises the only ones he barks at is the there's a fire alarm that all the buildings have around here yeah. if that goes off he'll bark it doesn't matter if it's in the inside of the main area or if it's um outside he'll bark at that uh but inside this fire alarm he doesn't bother car alarms he doesn't bother if he hears a dog down the street that barks in, a, in whatever way, he'll try to go up and bark. toys lying around the house so if the buzzer goes off he has because that's what he'll do that if the buzzer goes off <laughs> and does he do this the whole time people are here maybe not to this like Chucking the toy around, but yeah, he's just on it the whole time. People are just... Which is, you know, and I think it's, it's also difficult because I don't have people around all the time, so it's mainly just him and me. You want it on, you can fix it. You remind me of my little dog. So, can you just go and touch that picture again for me? And does he have any allergies? He does. Oh, he does. does. Just going to touch that for me again. Yes. Okay. I'm going to you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
that's that true. in there for a second or so. Okay. And what I want is just to see if he'll just settle down for a little bit. So if we can just sit down for a second, so it's, it's more a little bit normal in yeah, a sense. Yeah. Versus all just standing staring. <laughs> staring at him. So whining's gonna be a little bit normal for him because obviously he's has FOMO, fear of missing out. So yeah. he's gonna wanna come out, obviously he wants to get to the toy, he wants to see what you're doing, he wants to be in that bag, he wants to be on his lap, wants to be, has this fear of missing out. So he went quiet there, so all I did was just go over, okay. just give him a little, yeah. a little treat. I want him to learn that this whining and this sort of FOMO behavior that he has isn't going to get him to where he wants to be. Okay. Because obviously, you said that you start to use the crate like after his main walk. Yeah. But he can't settle when there's people here. Yeah. This is adding to his anxiety and why he's kind of on edge all the time because okay. he can't settle when people are here. Yeah. Because he's, he's not being forced in a sense. So if you move, they move. If they pick up something, boom, he's straight there. You so. Because he has to know everything you're doing at every second of every minute yes. of every hour, it's got so obsessive that you can't open a drawer, you can't move a picture. Yeah. Because yeah, if he's not there, he almost panics and has to rush over there. Mm -hmm. And what it's doing is it's just holding him back a little bit. So the crate is step one. Okay. I'm not saying when people come round, put him in the crate straight away let him say hello to the people okay but like get the people to ignore him okay. when he's crazy okay because that's only going to add to that when he's settled down a little bit pop him in there for a little bit so okay. he gets a little bit of decompression okay. so he learns that when there's people are here and there's things going on i'm still here but this is what mum wants from me okay yeah and this will just prevent him pacing back and forth, which will prevent him getting so worked up. Okay. Let he's laying down. That's, That's the quickest he's settled. Yeah. But if you notice, the whining's not getting him anywhere. It's the pause that I'm looking for. When he stops whining, I'm rewarding him. So because we're actually waiting for that moment where he's... Look, look he's gone straight down now. Because mm. we're waiting for that moment where he settles a little bit okay he's actually coming up with that bit quicker because that bit pays and then we can go longer and longer in between where we treat him but if he knows i'm only going to get rewarded for that quiet yeah i'm actually having to calm down to get what i want yeah so instead of having that fomo he's going what if i lay down mm -hmm. and then we can drag it out drag it out drag it out okay but if he knows the only way he gets this reward or that attention or that acknowledgement is by settling down that becomes more of a natural behavior look remember the worst thing we can do is rush pause okay. because he's crazy yes, so we need to be crazy. calm so we don't want yeah. to be fast and add to that yeah we want to take your time open the drawer shut the drawer a little bit nowhere near it bad though no no yeah so you can start to do it obviously he might not be able to see but go and touch your pictures but what he needs to learn I could even do that yeah go on what he needs to learn is once nice a little bit 
But we'll just ignore that because, again, what he's not doing, though, is getting that reinforcement of being able to rush over there and mm -hmm. bark his head off. Got it. Yeah? Okay. Further away from what he wants to get to, the less reactive he is to that thing, in a sense. That's why space is key. So when you yeah. see a dog and you create space, it's easier for him. The closer he is to it, exactly. the harder it is. I would also have a lead on him in the house a little okay. bit. Obviously, when you can supervise him. Uh -huh. uh, just because it gives you something to sort of step on and just take back so control. So if I just leave this on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Myla doesn't have a lead on in the house now, but the first, I'd say probably the first three to four weeks, she had a lead on inside the house. Okay. The reason it's important to ignore him oh. now. Sorry. Yeah, the reason is, that's not a problem for you. The reason it's important to ignore him now is because we want him to be calm. Okay. Like we're all going to give him a little bit of attention, but we're going to do that when he's nice and calm. Right now, although he's not crazy, he's still he's still doing something that we don't like. Yeah, yeah? makes sense. And this is why so many dogs have problems. Yeah, so many dogs have problems because what we don't understand is when we touch him, we're basically saying good boy. If you think yeah. about it, when you recall the dog and you make a big fuss or ask him to sit and you stroke him, why are we doing that? We're doing it as reinforcement for a job well done, yeah? So if he jumps up at the bin and we start stroking him, we're not telling him jumping up at the bin is wrong, we're saying good boy for jumping up at the bin. Mm -hmm. So he's just come out of his crate and he's going around investigating what we like, yeah? And when the dog's doing something we like, when all four paws are on the floor, mm -hmm. then we can make a fuss at the dog, yeah? You want a better behaved dog? Stop stroking them just because they're there. Fuss what you like. Before you touch a dog, before you stroke a dog, because that's your reward. You recall the dog, good boy, well done. Sit, good boy, well done. That's reinforcement okay. of a positive kind, yeah? yeah? Before you stroke your dog and basically start saying, good boy, well done, mm -hmm. make sure that what you're touching you actually like. Because the dog learns, I'll do that next time to get that belly rub. I'll do that next time to get that ear rub. I'll do that next time to get your attention. Okay. So if he's jumping on me and I'm like, yeah, good boy, guess what he's gonna do every time I sit down? Okay. Before I go out for a nice night out or something, dressed all nice, I've got a ball of terrier all over me. So just show me what a start of a walk looks like okay. with you. Obviously he's already got his lead on. Yeah, so we would be over here, we'd get lead on. Puppy. Yeah, just, let, let's just, we'll, we'll just go sort of. Because I wanna, I wanna see what it's like. I've seen what he's walking is like outside and like I said, to really address his dog reactivity, we need to get you to the training center, but he needs to not have a morning walk. Sit. Uh, Wait. You said this is it, so he knows if he has to go. Wait. Okay. All right, stop. Come back. So, couple of things. When, when it comes to thresholds, mm. the picture looked good. Okay. Mentally, it wasn't. Okay. So what you did, sit, you had him in a sit. Mm -hmm. That was fine. Okay. Still whining. Yeah. Mentally, he's not calm. Okay. Yeah. So he, he will go out with this energy. How he passes through here into the outside world is how he starts to walk. So although he sat, okay. yeah, he's just knowing that if I sit, we go. So he's almost like at a racetrack, yeah. waiting for that mm -hmm. gun to go off. Then what happened is we went, sit, we had him in a sit, we opened the door, and then we did the dreaded, okay, and look, see that little thunderbolt, like oh, the gun yeah. going off. Got it, okay. When we say okay, or break, or things like that, that's often a release. Mm -hmm. Free dog, off we go, excitement. Okay. So now, we took the time for him to sit there nicely, but then we just riled him up as we passed I the see. Okay. threshold. So what we want, sit. The sit is good. No whining. Better. Door open. Calm. So just See how he exits okay. much calmer. Got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then threshold number two sits. We then do the same thing, but we shut this door. Okay. We wait. Let us wait. But we wait for calmness. Okay. Then we set off again. Then mm -hmm. we do the same thing at the door downstairs, okay. and the same thing when at. Sit. Breaking it down, step okay. by step. 
Great. So he will have a much calmer walk if we get this bit right. He'll pull less and less if we get this bit right. Mm -hmm. Most people make the dog sit and wait. Yeah. But then they undo everything by, I got him. Or the dog's sitting, but it's not calm. 